Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotac and Apple released iOS 26.1 beta 2 to developers and iOS 26.1 public beta 2 should be out either by the time you're watching this video or sometime tomorrow. This came in at 1.97 gigabytes on my iPhone 17 Pro Max, was about the same size on the other devices here that Apple released alongside with it, with iPadOS 26.1 beta 2, macOS 26.1 beta 2, tvOS and HomePodOS 26.1 beta 2, along with VisionOS 26.1 beta 2 and watchOS 26.1 beta 2 and other updates as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go into settings, then we'll go down to general, then about. And as you can see, we have a very long build number this time around. It's 23B5059E. And this particular update does have new features and changes. And the first thing they've updated is the modem. So there is a modem update. So if you were having issues with maybe connectivity with cellular, hopefully this resolves those issues. But but one thing they've updated has to do with the overall look of liquid glass. Now it depends on the wallpaper and background you have, but on the right is beta two on the left is beta one. Many people are saying it has more of a glass appearance this time around as Apple continues to update this. And the same is true with sort of reflections and refractions around different places. They've also updated something we saw in the code last time, but we didn't have a physical option for it. And that's found under settings. If we go down to, our privacy and security menu, scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see that we have a new option for background security improvements. Within this option, it can now automatically install these where it says background security improvements provide additional protection to your iPhone in between software updates. In rare instances of compatibility issues, these security improvements may be temporarily removed and then enhanced in a future software update. This is much like rapid security response that we only saw a couple of, and we don't know how often they'll use this, but we now have the option for it and you can turn it off and then it will warn you if you want to. So maybe we'll see some updates in here in the future. Now, again, with design changes, if we're in the main menu under settings, if we go to general, you'll see that they've updated the topic here or the heading where it says general and it's to the left now compared to what we had before under general, everything was centered. So they've updated this throughout the OS under many different places. For example, under Wi-Fi, it's now updated. So again, the same changes, the same is true. If we go under Bluetooth, you'll see side by side again, it's to the left again, and we see this throughout. So cellular, as well as other places with accessibility. And there's only one place I'm not seeing it under Apple intelligence and Siri. So they haven't updated it here yet, but they have updated it in other places. For example, under face ID and passcode, you'll see again, it's to the left. And then if we go under privacy and security, you may have already noticed that when I was talking about the new feature there, emergency SOS doesn't look that much different here. But again, if we scroll down and go to apps, we also see this under default apps as well. So it's sort of a new design language. Everything is to the left. And we also see this in folders. If we open up a folder, the folder title is now to the left with a little bit more bolded text. So again, some design changes as they continue the iOS 26 change. There's also an update when it comes to the clock under alarms. If you have an alarm set and maybe you want to dismiss it, they've made it a little bit more difficult to dismiss the alarm. So you don't do it accidentally. So we'll go ahead and lock the phone. And when the alarm sign signals, I'll actually share it with you and show you what it looks like. So as the alarm is going off, you can see that we now have to slide to stop or snooze. So slide to stop. It just looks a little bit different now. Again, going along with design changes, if we go into photos and then we set this photo as a wallpaper. So we'll set that as a wallpaper, tap the clock here, and now they've fixed this and made it look more like liquid glass. So you'll see here, it looks a little bit different where we have much more of a glass look. And then also the bottom radius of the corners here has been fixed where before it just didn't look right. It was more squared off and just went into the edges. This has been resolved. Also something else I noticed is if I tap on add widgets, you'll see it says preparing. So sometimes when you go into this right away, it will say preparing widgets. So if we cancel this, we'll try it again and you'll see preparing at the bottom. Then sometimes again, when you go to select a widget, it will say preparing and then show that here. So it depends on how quickly you do this, but that's something I was seeing that was different. Now, if we go into settings and we go back this time under sound and haptics, one change they've made is under silent mode. It's now red where it was green before. So that's a small change, but again, they're continuing to refine things throughout. Also, many of you will be happy to hear that hypertension alerts are back. So if we go under the health app, so we'll find that here, we'll go under health and within health, you'll see here, if we go to heart 
under heart, scroll down, you'll see that we have hypertension notifications. Apple didn't have this in beta one for some reason. Maybe it was an oversight or the build was before they actually released the feature, but now it's here and you can sync your watch with it. And if you were counting on these, they're now available in beta two as well. There's also an update in photos with a small design change. So you'll see here's some photos I have if I press and hold, they've now changed the context menu. Again, it has more of a liquid glass look and delete is now at the top. So again, it's a small change, but they continue to refine things. Something else that they've updated finally has to do with settings again. And if we go under settings and this time under display and brightness, they've now updated the wallpaper to iOS 26 wallpaper. Now they may have updated it here, but they forgot it down under display zoom. So this is older wallpaper. They still need to update it, but I'm not sure why they don't put that in iOS 26, but of course it's fairly minor, but it's something they weren't able to get to before. Again, another change that has to do with design is under the app store within the app store. If we go to our account in the upper right on the right is beta two, and you'll see the arrows for apps, subscriptions, purchase history, and notifications are now blue. So that's compared to what we had before with gray. It's just a small update, but something they've changed. Now, as far as other releases, well, Apple updated the support app this time around with liquid glass. So there's now a liquid glass design. Again, the older update is on the left here. So they've updated the support app to support all of the latest looks and features with new menus with liquid glass and more. Also United Airlines support has been added to Apple wallet. So if you want to add that with your boarding pass and everything else that should now work and also driver's licenses and ID cards now work in North Dakota. I mentioned this in the weekend, but it's something that's been updated this past week. So if you're in North Dakota and you want to use digital ID, you can, you don't have to use it, but it's available here. And it looks like the passport option is coming in the future. We don't really know when, but it should be in a future update as well. Now, another major update, and this is something people have been wanting back for a long time is slide over with beta two iPad OS 26.1 beta two. If we go into maybe apple.com and Safari, of course we can move things around in the windowed mode, but in the upper left, if we press and hold, you'll see, we now have the option to enter slide over. So now we can slide this over, slide it off the screen. We've got a little arrow. We can pull it back and they've brought this feature back finally. Hopefully they make windowing a little bit easier. I do find that split view is a little tough to use still, but this is something many people have been wanting back for a long time and you can use it or you can just jump out of it again by pressing and holding and exiting slide over. So that's finally back on iPad. When it comes to bugs and bug fixes, well, one thing I noticed is if I go into my control center, go to add a shortcut here. So if we add a shortcut and try and go into this and choose a shortcut, we don't have the option. It works in older updates, but not on iOS 26.1 or 26.0.1 for me. So you can press and hold and it still doesn't work properly. Also, it does seem to have fixed the wallpaper bug. So again, let's get rid of these here. You'll see it brightens up a little bit and it's not dimming the wallpaper in the background, at least on the home screen anymore. At least for me, it's not doing this beta one was, it looks like they fixed it here. Now, as far as other bugs and issues, well, it will take a few days to notice if things are fixed or if there's additional issues. And we'll talk about that in the weekend follow-up video. But if we go into Safari and take a look at Apple's public facing release notes on beta two, I compared these side by side with beta one and they're identical in every way. So no changes here. They haven't really mentioned anything mentioned that they've resolved any additional things or have any other known issues. But if you are having issues, make sure you report that in the feedback app. So make sure you use feedback and report any issues issues that you're having as Apple utilizes that and fixes the most important things first and then works on the smaller bugs later on. Now we also expect some updates in October from Apple with an Apple event. So there should be an October Apple event where we'll see some new iPads, possibly some new MacBooks, maybe Apple TV as some of this information was leaked by the FCC. So that's something that we recently got confirmation of. We just don't have an exact date. So they either could push out the products or send out an Apple invite for different creators to go to Apple park and see all of the new products. So we'll have to wait and see what they do with that. But I would say that will take place as soon as next week or possibly the week after that. Now, as far as iOS 26, we could see an iOS 26.0.2 release. We don't really know, but if there's something pressing enough or security updates or more, they could fix bugs in between that and 26.1. And as far as iOS 26.1 beta three, we could expect that as soon as next week or the week after. We don't know if we're on a weekly cycle yet, as it's been a little different this year, but if we see it next Monday, then I would expect maybe a beta four and then maybe an RC with a public release around maybe November 3rd. We don't have an exact date, but that seems about likely. So we'll have to wait and see what they do with the betas.
Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 26.1 beta two, well, if you're on beta one, absolutely install it. However, if you're on iOS 26.0.1, I would probably hold off. It's still a beta. I expect some bugs. And again, we'll talk about that in the weekend as we test this out and see what it's like. But when it comes to performance, well, ProMotion seems to be much smoother even on older devices. So I heard from some of you and you've said even on an iPhone 14 Pro Max, for example, ProMotion seems to ramp up and down nicely and everything is working much faster this time around. Now, some people have said there's more lag, but the majority have said so far, at least that it seems smoother. Also, some have said that there's better RAM management. Their apps are not closing out in the background. So it looks like it's running pretty well on older devices. It's super smooth so far on newer devices as well. Heat seems to be managed pretty well. None of these devices got very hot while I did the update. Of course, I do expect it to heat up. That's pretty normal, but it wasn't so hot that you couldn't pick the phone up or anything like that. When it comes to battery life, well, again, we'll have to see what that's like after a few days, but this particular device you'll see here, if we go to battery health, I'm at eight cycles with 100% battery capacity. I've been testing other devices such as the iPhone air and iPhone 17. So I'll be using the iPhone 17 pro max probably as my main device, but I haven't made a decision on that yet. But most people report iOS 26.1 battery life as pretty decent. Of course, it could improve always, but we'll have to wait and see, give it a few days. And today I've had one hour and 50 minutes of screen active time, one hour and 19 minutes of screen idle time and use 17% of the battery. So I charged it a little bit. It seems like it's doing pretty well, but again, it will take a few days to measure and we'll talk about it on the weekend. When it comes to overall storage, let's go back here. We'll go to general and then iPhone storage. Let's take a look at the 16 pro max with beta one on it and scroll to the bottom here. Once it loads, there we go. And we're taking up about the exact same amount of storage, 20.79 gigabytes for beta one, 20.7 gigabytes for beta two. So very, very similar sizes. It looks like they're basically slight differences with Apple intelligence and iOS. As far as benchmarks, I did run initial benchmarks on the 17 Pro Max. I actually ran them twice just to see what they're like. They usually improve a little bit after we give it a few days, but we have 3,618 for single core, 9,155 for multi-core. Running it twice, I got similar experiences here, 9,126 the first time, a little bit better the second time, but again, I would expect it to improve in a few days. So that's everything so far with iOS 26.1 beta two. I'm sure we'll find additional features as we continue to use this. And we'll talk about that in the weekend follow-up. Let me know how it's going for you and what device you're using it on and what the experience has been like for you. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.